I think the, the country, the government, has woken up to the fact of just how serious the threat is, the threat from China. And before it was kind of, uh, 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 we were looking at it as one-off instances. Uh, it was kind of uh, amusing at the time, and, and nobody really connected the dots. And I think what you've seen now is a groundswell. Uh, the government is all in on this China threat. Uh, and recently has come in all in on it. And they realize now that it must be a whole of nation approach, uh, just as the Chinese Communist Party has a whole nation approach, approach against the United States and all of our Western allies. So <clears throat> you've seen a swing, a shift over to, uh, to a whole of nation approach, which now includes not just the government, but the private sector, which includes both business and academia. You almost make it sound like we're at war here, but we're not, right? Um, it depends on who you ask. If you ask the Chinese Communist Party, they are in absolute war with us. And um, uh, consistently they have said they are at war with the United States. And it's a life and death war. Um, to them, it's a life and death war. To the United States, we're not used to that. We're not used to um, uh, what war is. In the United States, Americans and even our Western allies, war is you're either in war in a bloody battle with uniforms, tanks, planes, and generals, or you're not. And our adversaries have waged uh, what they call an asymmetric war, an asymmetric hybrid war against us. And, uh, and that's everything short of conventional war that we're aware of. So um, I think the first thing everybody needs to understand is the, the war that is, that is being waged and has been waged on, on the United States and the West has, by, incidentally, been around for 34 years, even longer than that since the, uh, the start of the Communist Party in China, which was 1949. But in 1986, they came out with a nation-state directive called Program 863, and that's after 1986, month number three which I'll give you my layman's terms, will basically lie, cheat, and steal to global dominance. So that's the war. And we, so we all have to understand that they have waged war on us. We have not waged war on them as uh, you know, a conventional war. But the war that's being fought is something that we're not used to. We're not used to this whole hybrid warfare thing, which is everything asymmetrically uh, from all sides. So an asymmetrically is basically an attacking from all angles, all sides, to weaken the United States uh, and to take over the United States. That's really what the overall, the end game strategy is. They want to defeat capitalism. They want to completely defeat democracy and turn the world into their own order. So <clears throat> we have to understand what the war is, what the fight is. And that's what, that's what the whole thing is around asymmetric, asymmetric different directions, hybrid warfare. Now what's hybrid warfare? Hybrid warfare is, is achieving military gains through non-military methods. That's what hybrid warfare is. So remember asymmetric, remember hybrid, and then warfare. Uh, we don't like the word war in the United States because that means you know very nasty things. So what this is, this is uh, uh, a challenge. It's uh, the biggest, the bigger name is called uh, great power competition. Okay. About every 70 years, if you look at history, about every 70 years, a nation or a na couple of nations come up and say, we want to challenge the world order. That's called great power competition. It, today, in our time, in current day, that, that is, of course, China, Russia, uh, and they've got friends by the name of Iran and North Korea. So they're all alliance together, allied together, and they're all communist. I, and the other thing is when we talk about China, um, some people uh, regard China as another democracy, and that's not the case. China is a clear, serious, oppressed, oppressive, authoritarian, dictatorship, um, communist country. So there aren't two Chinas. There's one China, and it's a communist-driven country with a command and control with a straight line through, through, uh, through the country. So we have to understand that as Americans and our, and our Western allies. We have to understand that in, you know, if we're doing business in China, whether we put a plant, a laboratory, a development center, um, we're selling into China, we're buying Chinese products, we're partnering with the Chinese Communist Party. And that's, that's absolutely the truth if anybody does any type of research or studies into what this is. So it is what it is. And what's, what's refreshing is our government. And I, I met with uh, senior leaders yesterday of, of our government. And uh, 
they underscore uh, the seriousness of this. It's an existential threat to the United States because the Chinese Communist Party wants to, you know, weaken us through our economy, which is where our strength is. Our, our strength is through our economy, and they want to weaken that by stealing the technology and so on. Another point, I want, you have to understand what our adversary is all about. Our adversary is all about live versus die. In other words, we must, their philosophy is we must live, but you must die. So, you, so when we compete, we have to win. We have to, in other words, we live, you must die so you can never compete again. That in Chernobyl, and particularly if you watch the HBO series, was pretty accurate. At least Putin doesn't think so, but people in the West do. The key to the Chernobyl thing is that the the, uh, the apparatus, the official centralized decision making, it was about not just their incompetence, not just their their first ability is to cover everything up to keep information themselves, but it's what they they didn't know what they didn't know, that the the scale of the event was so big they didn't actually understand it. That seems to be the situation here. You know, she sent Vice Premier Sun down there. She's the woman that's kind of like the Khrushchev at Stalingrad. She goes in and says, hey, we're not backing up an inch. In fact, she said, this is what quarantine means to me. Quarantine means to me that we're going to go door to door. It's a, it's a city the size of New York. We're going to go door to door. We're not going to redo- We're going to take your temperature. If we deem that you're sick, we deem you're coming with us. And that's where we got all these videos of people being dragged out of their apartments. You're going to a quarantine center where you go in and you leave by you know ambulance to be cremated later you're not you're not there's no way that you're not there it's, it's not a hospital and if you don't go you know they said patriots do that and, and traitors will be nailed to the cross of history or however they described it but they're nailing people in they're shutting people into the doors they're not playing around they, they understand they've got a massive problem forget how it was covered up all that that all come out in time but right now they have an operating problem that is just expanding exponentially. See, the larger point is many people in high government are not domain experts. I mean, they lack expertise in systems biology, in mathematical statistics, in information engineering, bioinformatics. These are highly complex technical fields which requires domain experts. And we in America have them you know india has them china has them too but the chinese communist party like you said in a a combination of face saving and a combination of self-preservation is preventing them from reaching out to the outside world including organizations such as the cdc and other experts in america to deliver help to their people why why are they stopping that president trump has now offered three times to send the cdc been been rebuffed every time why do they not want people like the CDC, why do they not want the CDC actually to not just be, go to Beijing, but to go down to Wuhan? The answer again, Steve, is the problem is far, far worse than they let on to. And if American experts come on the ground and discover that the number of cases is understated, according to official statistics, and the true numbers are say of infected are 3 million, 5 million, 10 million. I don't know what the number, it's in the millions for sure. Why do you say it's in the millions for sure? Just as you've seen. Again, exponential functions. I mean, you've had since the Chinese Lunar New Year, that was in middle of January, third week of January. Yeah, around the 18th and 19th, 20th. Yeah, in, in a month. And we have doubling of cases every six days. So the math is simple. I mean, if, if, if you're willing to look at it in, directly in the face. So, if American experts and other international experts come on the ground in China and discover and report to the world the seriousness of the infection, I mean, it would cause a worldwide panic. Tonsu 
，我求求所有的战友们和国内的，啊，能听到这个直播的人，包括战友能传播这个直播的战友们，告诉家人，切不可大意，绝对不能放松，灾难的时刻根本没有到来。分水岭是在二十九号后，二月二十九号。二月二十九号，二月二十九号，我说三遍。所有战友们，告诉家人，切不可掉以轻心。啊，不要相信共产党任何一句话。中国不要说死几百万人，死几死个几千万人、一亿人，共产党都是不在乎的。千万不要让家人的无知送上全部的性命。不要走出家门，不要出去。在安全的、绝对安全的情况下啊，不被共产党伤害、不被疫情传染的情况下，在备好粮食、备好药、备好口罩，或者转移到深山老林去做一个几个月的打算。请战友们一定要记住，告诉家人和朋友，战友们一定要收住，要搂住，灾难并未到来。分水岭是二月二十九号，春节的时候。二四周前我就说过，二月二十九，二月二十九，千万不可掉以轻心。